Genshin Impact is a very mysterious game. There is still so much lore that we don't know about the game, and one of those biggest pieces of lore is definitely the characters behind this game. We of course have characters we know a lot about, like for example Klee, who completely destroys mountains. But there are also other mysterious characters for example, being Klee's mother, Alice. I did a theory on where she could be by the way, so you should go check that out. Not just Alice though, the world of Teyvat is and was inhabited by a lot of mysterious beings. And today, I wanted to cover 10 characters in Genshin that we really don't know a lot about. Before we begin, I'm going to be live tonight at around 8pm PST on Twitch to pull for C2 Ball and her weapon. So if you want to see my luck, stop on by. Our Twitch link will be in the description below. Now, there are quite a few mysterious characters from Inazuma so far. I should also say this was recorded before the 2.1 update, so if any information has been updated about these characters, then my bad. But I mean, there's characters like Sasayuri, Mikoshi Chio, Kitsune Saigu, Saigu's biological son, Iwakura Doke, her adopted son, Mikoshi Nagasama, Yae Miko, and one of the most interesting ones to me being Takamine the Mist Splitter. Takamine is described in the Emblem of Severed Fate artifact set. He had a nickname that he went by known as Konbumaru. He was known for his swordsmanship and archery skills across Inazuma, but his swordsmanship was nearly unmatched. He was also known for his infamous gambling and drinking skills. Takamine learned his archery from a Tengu whom he dueled, and had a record of three wins and three losses against her. To obtain the Thundering Pulse Bow, he became the Tengu's servant for a short time. Eventually, Takamine obtained the bow and followed her to the Grand Narukami Shrine where he met Kitsune Saigu, and the love of his life, Kanade the Shrine Maiden. Saigu even teased her about him from time to time. Once his servitude ended, Takamine got a recommendation letter from his master to become a Hatamato for Lord Ball. He wound up marrying a high-ranking samurai's daughter and still couldn't knock his habit for drinking and gambling, a habit that Kanade obviously gave him a hard time for. After a time, the cataclysm struck, thus Takamine participated in it. He made a wager with Kanade, giving up Thundering Pulse if he didn't return. They both agreed to it, and he only went into battle with his mighty sword, the Mist Splitter. Due to an unfortunate fate, Takamine was thought to have been swallowed by the darkness, thus giving the impression he was dead. However, he wasn't dead, and went back many years later to greet his beloved, who had grown old in the process. Upon being greeted, Kanade shot Takamine and stated it was to save him. I love these kinds of characters because it makes us wonder what bigger role he played on Inazuma. I don't think he was taken over by darkness. I think he was 100% fine, but then again, I can't blame Kanade in some ways. Also, fun fact, Takamine was his surname. We have no idea what his first name is. Who knows? Maybe it's Scaramouche, and his symbol on the Fatui Harbinger Wheel is the Doll of the Heart. I'm kidding. That's crazy talk. Up next is a character that we know a bit about, but she is still a huge mystery, being Alice. I am pretty much familiar with everything we know about Alice because I have done endless hours of research on her. However, that doesn't mean she still isn't filled with mystery. For one, we have no idea what she looks like. We just know that she resembles Klee in a sense because she is her daughter. What we know about Alice is that she is free-spirited, she's a lovable dork, she loves her Mondstadt family, she is a genius when it comes to alchemy, and she's a near-omnipotent sorceress according to Albedo. Alice also took off three years ago, and we have no idea where she is or when she will be back. I gave my thoughts in my theory, but there's also the idea she could have gone to the Dark Sea. The Dark Sea is a term that refers to any location beyond the continent of Teyvat. Because they are not within Teyvat's boundaries, those who dwell there do not live under the Dominion of the Seven. But yeah, Alice can also travel to other worlds, as we've heard from the Golden Archipelago dialogue. What's really mysterious though is Alice's husband. We don't have any info on him, aside from the fact he's with Alice. Is he Alice and Klee's race, or is he a human? I want more information on Alice's husband so I can do a theory on him stat. Step to it, Mahoya. Say hello to Xing Cho's first master, Gu Hua. Gu Hua, I actually learned recently, was originally an adeptus from Liyue. He was known for being a famous martial artist known for his Gu Hua style of weaponry. Gu Hua martial arts consist of three secret arts. Light Piercer for Polearms, Rain Cutter for Swords, and Life Ender for those who have mastered both weapons. 
Funny enough though, Gu Hua himself actually used claymores. In fact, his signature claymore was known as the Rain Slasher, a four-star claymore. In its lore, it speaks about the different styles. Formless like the rain that cuts through rain, weightless like the light that pierces light, untouchable moving like a snake, inescapable as swords stare and polearms glance. He actually didn't have any direct relation to the Guha clan, though it was started by one of his close associates. And from there, the Guha clan attained many followers for quite some time. During its heyday, the Guha clan, or Brotherhood, was known for performing chivalrous deeds across Liyue, though nowadays it has declined by a pretty wide margin. Xing Chou is one of the few individuals who still use the Guha arts today, as we see him use the rain cutter style. What happened to Gu Hua himself, you ask? Well, according to his signature weapon, the Rain Slasher, at the end of his journey, he ascended and became a star in the midst of a purple haze. Rain Slasher was originally called the Beacon of the Nether by Mountain Bandits. It meant there was no way back. The only way was forward towards the end of one's life. This quote must correlate with his ascension to the sky. With that said, that's pretty much all we know about. I wonder what his relationship with Zhang Li is. One of my favorite Genshin characters ever is Vanessa. And my goodness, would I love to find out more about her. The only instances we have seen with her are from the Genshin webtoon. Vanessa was a hero from Mondstadt who lived around 1,000 years ago. She was a young Marotan enslaved by Mondstadt's corrupt aristocracy from the Lawrence clan. Vanessa wasn't just your typical slave though. In fact, she was actually a gladiator who fought for the freedom of her people and her younger sister, Linda. She became known as the Lion Fang Knight due to her undefeated streak. Her and her sister Linda had a very close bond, and she dreamed of one day being able to set her people free. Well, that day came as she met the anima archon Barbados. With the help of Barbados, Vanessa and another group of Mondstadians were able to overthrow the aristocracy, thus establishing the Mondstadt we know today. Some people she worked with were the Dawn Knight and possibly members of the Wanderers trope. Seeing Vanessa's skills as a warrior, she was given the right to ascend to Celestia, thus becoming the Falcon of the West. Some say that the hawk seen with Diluc is actually Vanessa, which would definitely be pretty amazing if it was. I want a Vanessa story quest, and I want to see a rematch between her and Ursa the Drake. That would make a lot of fans happy, I feel. The Fatui Harbingers currently consist of 11 members, going from well-known ones to La Signora the Fair Lady, Scaramouche, and Child aka Tortaglia. We've also seen instances of Dottore in the manga, and it really shows he's kind of a nut job. The rest of the Harbingers are known, but not really mentioned. There are nine members that have been revealed so far, but there are two we have no information on at all. The only speculation we have is that the two could be Harlequin or Columbina. Columbina being the little dove, or the sad dove on the Harbinger symbol chart, or Harlequin being Columbina's beloved. Harlequin is only Columbina's lover sometimes though in Commedia dell'arte, so the other missing member, if it's not Harlequin, I don't have any idea of who it could be. I know this is going to sound crazy, but what if Alice and Harlequin are the last two Harbingers? Harlequin being Klee's father would definitely be very interesting, and seeing Alice and the Harbingers would definitely be a crazy plot twist. Speaking of the Commedia dell'arte, or Fatui Harbingers, we have someone who is not quite in the Fatui Harbingers, but has a close relationship to one of them being Rostam, or the Crimson Witch's lover. At this point, we all know La Signora is the Crimson Witch, so Rostam was originally La Signora's lover, which caused her to become the Crimson Witch, practically burning her entire body off in rage of losing him after the Calamity of Conria. Enough about the Crimson Witch though, let's hop into what we know about Rostam other than the fact he was La Signora's lover. Rostam was a knight from Mondstadt known as the Wolf Pup, and was close to the Knights of Favonius Grand Master Arwen Dolan. Rostam and Arundolan grew up together as children, and eventually became rivals as knights. Rostam was known for his knighthood and combat style that is still practiced today. It is said that despite being a knight of Favonius, he still got his hands dirty in the background. He inherited Crew's Lied Secret Society that helped Vanessa many years ago take back Mondstadt from the Lawrence rule, which is connected to the infamous Wanderers trope. I can get more into Crew's Lied and the Wanderers trope another time, as they sound like a very intriguing group of people to talk about. Rostam was the master of the White Knight, who later became known as the Bloodstained Knight. 
Under Rostam's tutelage, the White Knight became a knight obsessed with justice and possessed all of Rostam's chivalry and swordsmanship. Unfortunately, despite how great a man Rostam was, he met his fate while exterminating monsters with the Knights of Favonius, ending his 23 years of service to the Knights. Shortly after, the Crimson Witch was born, after losing her beloved, and Arwen Dolan never lifted his sword again due to the grief of losing his long-life friend and rival. Rest in peace, Rostam. I would love to learn more about this guy, and we just may with the 2.1 update, as La Senora is going to be a new boss. Maybe we can get more insight on her experiences and her life. Do you guys remember when I talked about Amber's grandfather from the Why You Should Love Amber video? Amber's grandfather was originally a mercenary from Liyue, and the leader of a group that took on merchant caravan protection jobs. However, one of those jobs went wrong, and he was the only one who survived. He was saved by a doctor from the Knights of Favonius. Due to him feeling ashamed to return home, and wanting to repay the debt he felt like he owed, he moved to Mondstadt, thus becoming a Knight of Favonius, and established the Outrider Division of the Knights. In the famous words of Amber's grandfather to her, when Mondstadt accepted me, it became my homeland. Then I decided to watch over this new home of mine. Maybe one day, you will inherit this responsibility. Huh. But then, who knows what the future holds? After some time, granddaughter Amber was born, and this man taught her practically everything she knew. She eventually became an outrider herself, but she is the sole remaining outrider. Amber's grandfather was also the mentor of our favorite Lawrence clan member, Eula. The two were very similar, and he felt for her as he was an outcast of Liyue, and she was an exile of Mondstadt due to her bloodlines to the alleged Lawrence clan. Eula became a very close student to Grandpa, and also a close friend to Amber. He taught Eula an entire new outlook on life, even helping her find an identity despite the difficulties her bloodline gave her. So if you're a Eula main, and you love her personality, thank Amber's grandpappy. I expect to see hashtag thank you Grandpa Outrider in the comments below. Four years prior to the start of Genshin, Amber's grandfather vanished without a trace shortly after Amber became an outrider herself. We do have some information, however, on the Chingse Village bulletin board. He apparently returned to the village, but there's no further info about where he lives, nor why he returned. <sighs> this character seems to be the character we have the least information about on this list, being Arataki of the Front Gate. Arataki is one of the four renowned fighters of Inazuma mentioned in a popular Inazuma folk song, being Arataki of the Front Gate, Iwakura the Successor, Ketane the Serpent, and Takamine the Mist Splitter, who we talked about earlier. That's pretty much all the info we got on Arataki. However, it's likely that he is a descendant named Ito. Ito is, uh, a little interesting. He apparently got his vision taken away from him, but he hasn't lost any desires or anything of the sort, like how we saw with other vision holders affected by the Shogun's vision decree. He is definitely Oni due to the description of his horns, his fairly large build, and his tall stature. He seems very friendly with the kids of Inazuma, while also being a pain in the ass to Kujo Sara. He is salty about losing his vision after losing a fight to Sara, and is constantly trying to score a rematch with her. We can see this by looking at an Inazuman bulletin board, having a conversation with each other. He just seems to be really annoying, but they both agree to a rematch once the war on Inazuma is over. Ito seems to also be very competitive. He nearly killed himself by having a ramen eating competition with a lady with kitsune ears, most likely referring to Yae Miko. Apparently, he also has a gang, according to one of Sayu's voice lines. But little information is known about that, aside from one known member being known as the Kuki Ninja. So with all the info about him, it seems likely we may find out who he is in the 2.1 update. But we don't know for sure yet. He may even well be a playable character, but we will know soon enough. Baiju, we've known about for quite some time, but we know such little info about him despite how long he actually has been present. He is eventually going to be a playable character, but no one really knows for sure when that will be. I have a feeling that he will more than likely be playable when the Inazuman story starts to transition towards the Sumeru story, and that will be during a time when Inazuma is over and we head over to Liyue again to eventually learn more about Yayo and Baiju himself. They both are Dendro Visions, so maybe that will be the time to do it. To be honest though, we have some info on Baiju. For one, we know that he is the owner of the Boo Boo Pharmacy. 
Baiju first makes his appearance in Chapter 1, Act 2, Guizhong. Baiju is the first character we see with the Dendro Vision, and we find out that he is a master herbalist with loads of knowledge on the subject. We don't really know much about him other than his medicine tastes bitter, he takes care of the zombie Chi Chi, he is looking for eternal life, he has a deadly ailment that he has been unable to cure resulting in a weak and physical appearance, and the fact he has a snake named Chang Sheng. What's really mysterious is how he got his curse and why he is looking after Chi Chi. Obviously, his ailment made him very weak, and he is currently looking for a cure to prolong his life. We don't know for sure, but I do have a theory about him that I will be posting in due time, so be on the lookout for that. I think you guys will enjoy it. And finally, the last character on this list is none other than Gold the Alchemist. Gold is one of the most mysterious characters in Genshin. People suspect him to be Rhine Daughter, Albedo's master, or the Traveler's sibling. From what we know about gold on the surface level is that they are the one responsible for the destruction of Conria, unleashing a giant calamity across Teyvat, resulting in one of the biggest disasters in all of Teyvat's history. We know that the previous Dendra Archon was supposedly killed, three of Baal's friends were lost because of it, and the Crimson Witch lost her love. According to the book, Breeze Amidst the Forest, the alchemist known as Gold was corrupted by their own greed and ambition, and created an army of shadowy monsters with their uncanny powers. So we know that Gold was very power hungry and created an army of shadowy monsters that turned the continent of Teyvat into a bloodbath. These powers of them may or may not be linked to the Abyss, and the power that they are speaking of could possibly be the alchemic art known as Chemia. According to a mysterious prophet, the confluence between the past and future. The original calamity had been overturned, yet the island in the sky set the earth to burn. Chalk pursues gold in this time inopportune. The eclipse is swallowed by the crimson moon. The future must atone for bygone mistakes, as the bond familiar falters and breaks, of the same blood elders in the youth. Such is the cycle of the world in truth. Dane, what is the strand of blonde hair to you? Someone you must kill? or object of your penitence. We know that the Chalk Prince is Albedo, and it's been rumored that he is a homunculus of the dragon Durin, that same dragon from 500 years ago that was stopped by the Anima Archon Barbados and the dragon Dvalin. Albedo also knows the art of Chemia, so I definitely do think there is some connection there. But I could go on for hours about gold, so we can save that topic for another day. I feel any conversation about gold can go in circles. Well, that wraps up this first list of 10 characters in Genshin we don't know a lot about. I know you guys down below are going to be telling me I should have brought up this character or that character. And trust me, I know. This isn't going to be the only list I make consisting of characters like this. Genshin has tons of them. But with that said, leave me some characters down in the comments that you would like to hear about next. Anywho though, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks for opening up the Teyvatchinary. And with that, I will see you in the future for more Genshin Impact content and lore.